this video is to help you if you had any trouble with what we went over in class today, the idea of domain and range, and this goal we had from class today of being able to identify a relation's domain and range from its map, table, coordinates, and or graph. We will eventually add to this. There's one piece that's not here. Um, and then there's, um, and that's the idea of the actual equation or function notation. Um, but for now, all we need to be able to do is look at its map table coordinates or graph and identify its domain and range. So reminder, we had some simpler examples. And those simpler examples, which you can now see, are ones that used what we have as uh, what we would call discrete values. So it was very obvious what was going on. Um, any one of these we could rewrite in the other format. So uh, we have a table where one maps to negative seven, two maps to negative eight, three maps to negative nine, four maps to negative ten. We could also rewrite these as ordered pairs. And finding the domain and range here is as simple as knowing that the domain is the set of possible x's and the range is the set of possible y's or inputs and outputs. So all we need to do on these questions where we have a discrete set of points, since we can list them, we would use the set notation, these little braces, and we would just list all of the different values that x can take and then all of the different values that y can take much simpler than the ones we were handling at the end of class, right? So again, you could take a moment now and pause your video, make sure you could do this for the map and the coordinate set. But pretty straightforward, list the x's, list the y's. The only one that you might have something wrong with if you didn't actually paused and tried this out is remember if we have this two multiple times, we only need to write it one time in our set notation. We don't have to write it all three times that it appears. But we do need to write the three different distinct values. And then as a reminder, you could even go back and decide whether these are functions or not. Um, so if you want to, again, take a moment, pause the video, decide if these are functions. Um, in terms of functions, the first two are functions. It's okay to have two things mapped to the same output, but what we can't have is what's happening in the coordinate set, which is having, I'm gonna use a different color, two map to both one, three, and five. That means the machine is broken, it's not consistent, so this is not a function. So let's go through domain and range from a graph, the hardest part, right? The part that we spent so long on with that activity at the end of class. So domain and range from a graph. So as we discussed in class, your domain, remember, is still about your x values. This is where you want to do your scan from, oops, I was using red in class, so I'll use red again, from left to right. Or when we're thinking about that paper, we folded in the edge of the paper up to whatever endpoint we had on our graph, right? So we fold our paper in to the two different circles. So left to right, oops, we have an open circle here that looks like negative 3. We have a closed circle here, it looks like seven. And then the graph exists for all this values between. So in our domain, we use that interval notation. And I'll go ahead and post another video in a, in a bit that kind of breaks down the interval notation because I know we haven't really seen that much of it. But our interval notation, you wanna put the smallest possible value that x can be. So that would be negative three the largest possible value your x can be, 7. And interval notation tells us any value between negative 3 and 7 is OK. Now we do need to have that little cheat sheet we did in class, which is we use parentheses if we have an open circle or a strict greater than or less than, uh, also if we see a dashed line, or if we have infinity, because you can never truly reach infinity, positive or negative. And we would use closed brackets if we have a filled circle, if we have a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, I said those in the wrong order, but you get the idea, or if we have a solid line. So this is our cheat sheet that we're gonna wanna remember. I always kept this straight as a student because there, oops, there's an equals built into the brackets, right? You have the equal from the top and the bottom, which means we can actually reach seven. Seven is a solution.
Whereas you can look here, three has an open circle, so three isn't a solution. But we want to go up as close as we can to three. So we're going to use a parenthesis at three because it has that open circle. And we're going to use a bracket at seven because it has a closed circle. And remember, math, all about people being lazy and not wanting to write out all that in words. So in words, if a math person wasn't lazy, they'd be writing something like, X can be any number between negative 3 and 7, including 7, but not including negative 3. And now you can see why it's so nice to, like, I use, what, like six characters total to write all the same stuff that was in this sentence. So that's again all about that math laziness range wise okay well with the range now we're doing our scan from bottom to top so you want to start with the lowest possible values on your y axis so we don't see anything happening in this region on our graph right so we don't want to start until oh this lowest point of our graph appears like it's happening here right and the highest value part of our graph, again, this think about folding that paper upwards and downwards, is here. And remember, a solid line is a closed circle. So this solid line I'm going to bring over here as a closed circle at negative 3. This open circle I'll bring over as an open circle at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's a very generous 5 because those are very, very wide spaces. But you can see the idea. And again, with our in interval notation, we want to always do the smaller value than the larger value in this case from bottom to top, so a negative 3 to a 5. And again, we're going to look over here. The 3 is solid, so we're going to put a bracket on that 3. The 5 is an open circle, so we'll use a parenthesis. And I should have done my cute little, the graph exists everywhere here. Because there are tricky ones you could get later where the graph doesn't exist everywhere. So you do want to kind of make that note that it does exist in all those spaces. So again, in words, y can be any number from negative 3 to 5, including the negative 3, but not including the 5. The only way that this gets a little more challenging is when we add in some arrows, because then we have to deal with positive and negative infinity. So I'll give you guys one example to try on your own if you uh, want to do a little more practice. Here's your example. I'm going to give you a moment to pause so that way you can look at this thing, maybe copy it down if you're taking notes, or just use it. See if you can get the right domain and range. I really, really encourage you to pause and try this out on your own before you just jump in and watch me do the work. All right, so coming back, again, we could look at our domain, which is our x values, which is our scan from left to right. Think about that little piece of paper. On this side, we would have brought the paper in because we have a, a dot, right? And we would have brought that closed circle down. And we would have said, okay, we can tell. On the left side, we got a negative 4. On the right side, since we have this arrow, we would have left the paper open, right? So we would have left this side open, which means that we're going up to positive infinity. Because that's, oh, I should write it on the bottom. Because that's what's on the right-hand side, right? That's where the bigger numbers are. And then the graph exists in all these other places. So our domain, negative 4, to infinity. The 4 looks like we have a closed circle, so we use our bracket. And then infinity always gets that parenthesis to hug its curves, right? And then we've got our range, which is our scan from bottom to top. And if we look at the bottom of this, well, the first thing we come to is an arrow, which means that we would have left the paper open, right? And that arrow represents, since it's at the negative side of the y-axis, a negative infinity. And then we keep going, keep going. The graph exists, the graph exists, the graph exists. We don't want to stop at that, at this, that point, that, zero, that, that closed circle. And that's what a lot of students would want to do because the graph exists past that, right? And we want to go past this intercept as well because the graph exists past that. So we're going to keep going until the graph stops existing, which happens here. And since I did so much drawing, I can barely see my marks. One, two, three, four, at positive five, right? So the most common mistakes I see students making is trying to stop their domain and range either at an intercept 
or just at some value even if it's not the highest or lowest for the x or the y. So don't get distracted by those other special points. They are important, but they're not what we're looking for. You want to think about that paper and folding it down to where the graph stops uh, on the top or the bottom. So in this case, it looks like from bottom to top, we have a negative infinity of 5. Infinity always gets a parenthesis, and the 5, since this is a solid line, is going to get its bracket. So hopefully that helps out a little bit if you were having some confusion after class. You, at least you have this to refer back to. We did have some tricky ones in class, which I'll just take a moment to address if you wanted to see. Um, one of those tricky ones was, oh God, what was it? That one that we had trouble with. What did we have trouble with? Oh, not tricky, not too much trouble with it, but just a general kind of weird one is a linear equation, a straight line. Because this thing has arrows in both directions for every direction, right? Top and bottom, you've got arrows left and right, you got arrows. Um, this one, you're going to have negative infinity to infinity and negative infinity to infinity, right? Kind of silly. Doesn't ever stop or have any values it couldn't be. Um, the other one that was a little bit weird for our students was the ones where we had just points floating about. A lot of students still wanted to fold in the paper. Sorry, I should use red. They wanted to fold in their paper and say that this something like this went from like a negative four to three or something. But in reality, this is just like the ones we started this video with. This should be domain being the set of points, negative four. The next x we can have is negative two. The last x is three. And then your range, well, what are the possible values? It looks like we could have a 2, we could have a 3, and we could have a 4. So just keep in mind, we only want to use the interval notation when we're saying any value between here is, is cool and can happen. Like this, all of this is to, on that line. Here we don't have all of these values don't exist, right? There's nothing here at negative 3. So we can't put interval notation on this one. Oh, God. All right, so that's it. Um, Hopefully that clears things up. If not, shoot me emails. Uh, I have more worksheets if you want a little more practice. Trust me, I have no shortage of examples for you guys.